Wednesday night Bible study. Welcome to the Voice of Victory. Come on in the house. We're about to get this party started tonight. Come on, come on, come on in and be a part of the Victory Word Bible study tonight. I promise you, you're going to have a good time. In the Lord. Victory Word, Word family, it's our time. Wednesday night. Come on in. Take a seat. And let's get into the Word of God, all right? Come on and join me. Amen. And as always, before we get into the Word tonight, we have to thank our Heavenly Father. So let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you first and foremost tonight saying thank you. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. Father, tonight I ask you to illuminate our mind, open up our hearts so we can hear what you have to say to your people. And so, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you truly are my strength. You are my redeemer. You are my all in all. And it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. And I thank you, Lord God of Israel. Well, Victory Word, I'm excited tonight because I want to really teach on the Bible study topic for tonight, or our Bible study topic for tonight is emptiness without love. Emptiness without love. And it's coming, I'll be, the text is 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. I'm going by the reading from the message, but before we even get into the to the scripture or into the text, let me let me uh, give an opening an opening before my introduction. Victory word and word family, I want you to know that there's a lot of empty people, empty, with no love in. And you're going to encounter that. In this time that we're living in, there are people who just don't care. But we are kingdom-minded people. And we have the love of Christ in us. So don't you get don't you get bitter because other people are bitter. Don't you get frustrated? Don't you get uh, discouraged? Because Pastor Mike is here tonight to encourage you and to remind you that when nothing else could help, it was love that lifted me. So let's get into the word tonight. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, starting at the first verse. And I'm reading from the message, the message Bible. And the word of God says, if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe and what I do, I'm bankrupt with, without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowing of truth, 
puts up with anything. Trust God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooled like an infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, and love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. Victory Word, Word family, hear me tonight. Love is about action. How a person lives for the Lord and obeys him and how a person lives for others and serves them. I'll say that again. Love is about action. How a person lives for the Lord and obeys him and how a person lives for others and serves them. Paul's description of that action and behavior produced by love is distinctively countercultural. It speaks against the envy, pride, and self centeredness of the Corinthian Christians, and in doing so, speaks clearly to our generation today. In a society where so much is presented in terms of self, it's about self, it's about me, self, self awareness. Self esteem, self acceptance, self image, self realization to present a way of existence in which a person lives for the other in a life of loving self sacrifice will be highly provocative. Victory Word, can we love in this season of our lives in such a way that we get out of our way? Your pastor says yes. So let's get into the, 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 the nuts and bolts tonight. Let's really dig tonight, amen? Because there are too many people empty. And they're gifted, they're talented. As the scripture has said, they can do all of these things. They can prophesy, they have things, and still empty on the inside. And so victory word to remove emptiness and unfulfillment from our lives is to deny self. I'm here to tell you tonight, here's a news flash for you. Victory word, word family, and those tuning in tonight, I want you to know that everything ain't about you. It's not about you. To remove emptiness and unfulfillment from our lives is to deny self. What do you mean deny self? I'm not saying you should not take care of yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't have the best. But what I am saying is that shouldn't be in front of God and you shouldn't be so haughty with your stuff that you become unaware of people's situations and circumstances. And so the love of Christ that's in me ought to have compassion for someone else besides me. And so 
starve what we crave and allow God to feed us what we need. I'll say it again. Starve what we crave and allow God to feed us what we need. I come across so many people that's, uh, that's just about me, 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 me. Still looking for direction. You've told them a hundred times what to do. And still on the 100th and one, and one, they're still asking what to do. Why? Because they empty. It's a whole lot of empty people sitting up in church. It's a whole lot of people that's empty that's speaking in tongues. Why? Because their love ain't right. Love will make you look at yourself and, and see the inadequacies, inadequacies in yourself and start working on getting those things out by using the word of God that we've been taught. My Bible reads like this. It says, love covers a multitude of sins, which means it doesn't, it doesn't excuse it, but it doesn't expose it. And many times we want to expose people by our self-righteousness. And I'm here to tell you tonight, that's where the emptiness is. Because we say we love, but we don't show that we love. Starve what we crave and allow God to feed us what we need. Is there anybody in the room today that's hungry for truth? That's hungry and thirsting for righteousness? And righteousness is really just being in right standing with God. Love does not lie to itself to make the flesh feel good. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. Love does not lie to itself to make the flesh feel good. You cannot lie to yourself to make yourself feel good in a situation that you know you wrong in and you keep waiting on somebody else to agree with you or agree with me. You no, know, sisters and brothers, tonight we're going to look at this thing for what it is. We got to look at it for what it is. No, you're not always right. No, I'm not always right. There's nothing worth saying, I'm sorry, I apologize. I was wrong. When you truly love, you, you look at the situations and circumstances for what they really are. Stop making excuses for where you are. You're there. You know it, I know it, God knows it. You're there. Now the question is, what are you going to do about it? Back in the text, it says, love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. Is It isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others are groveling. Takes pleasure in the flowing of truth. That's not... Are you doing that? Are we doing that? It trusts God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love gives you the courage to keep on going. Gives you the, the strength to keep moving forward. And I'm here to tell you that you have to continue to move forward and don't allow things to hold you hostage. Don't allow your past to hold you hostage from what God promised you in the future. Because as Dr. Monroe said, 
Your future is not ahead of you. Your future is in you. And, and the word says, and he will be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Hear me tonight. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. Let me, let me, let me park there for a moment. The more we know about God, or the more we learn, it should ignite a fire in us to say, even, what, even though I know this, I want to know more. Because the more I learn about God, the more I find myself. The more I'm able to, 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 to move and have uh, authority in the earth when I truly understand the love of God and how it works in bodies, in one another. Victory word. Stop trying to make yourself look big in front of others to be accepted by people who could care less in the first place. Ooh, let me say that again. Let me say that again because somebody missed it. Stop trying to make yourself look big in front of others to be accepted by people who could care less in the first place. You trying to impress folks who don't even care about you and what you trying to do in the first place. You know why they don't care? Because they already know it's about you. You trying to make it about you. Not about the cause, not about God, not about not about a, 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 a organization that you're working for. It's all about you. You got to stop all of that. Because the only thing you're hurting is you. And other people that you're trying to impress is talking about you behind your back. And I'm here to tell you tonight, all that is, is called emptiness. Empty. Lord have mercy. Empty, empty, empty. So stop trying to make yourself look big in front of others. Stop trying to be accepted by people who don't even care. Word family. In this in this in the text it said this. Hear me when I hear, hear this part right here. When I was an infant, at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like an infant. But when I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. King James Version says it this way. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We need to, as we grow in Christ and our kingdom consciousness is, is to another level, stop running around trying to get validation from people. I'm not looking for validation from another person. I know who I am in Christ. And I know whose I am. And I don't need another person to pat me on the back. I don't need another person to give me good advice. The word then gave me good advice. And guess what? If I need some advice, I will come to you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking for it. And guess what, Victory Word, Word family? I'm not quick to give it. Because I done found out grown people already going to do or already know what they want to do. They just want to 
They just want to out from the pastor or from the from the bishop or they, they want to come and talk to you and ask you what you think about something. And if it doesn't line up with what they're thinking or what they're doing, they're going to do it their way anyway. So I stop wasting my time. Doing what? Trying to save people. You know why? Because I'm not the savior. Christ is the savior. I'm not trying to be no more than what he called me to be. And that's an under shepherd here at the Victory Word Church. And before that, what I'm trying to be and working towards is being a better husband, better father, a better friend. Those things. The people that I touch every day, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday. Oh, I love what I do. But this is just a part of God's big picture. And as I was taught as a child in the church I grew up in, I want to live, not be sick. And many of us are sick spiritually because we empty on the inside. We can run around, we can shout, we can jump, we can do, we can do all of those things. But if I don't have love, I'm talking about real love. I'm not talking about this kissy kissy, this stuff that we call love, this, this, this feel good stuff. No, I ain't, I'm, I'm not talking about that, not tonight. You know, the second verse, it said, if I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. Hear me tonight. You can have all the gifts, but if you don't have God's love, if you don't have that agape love, that's what I'm talking about tonight. If you don't have that, the word says you're nothing. So I don't care what title you have. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care your about your status in life. If you don't have love, sooner or later, your emptiness is going to show up and somebody else is going to see you for who you are and it's going to take the love of Christ in them to be able to reach you, to help you, to rescue you, if you take heed. My Bible says it this way. I may be paraphrasing it, but it says that the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And there's some hard-headed people because they haven't heard the voice. Yes, but I've realized this, when you have the love in you, then you gotta, you have the patience to wait. Yeah, you have the patience to wait on people. Victory Word, this is gonna, this is gonna knock you off your feet right here. Are you ready for it? I hope you're sitting down. Matter of fact, lay down, get in the prostrate, position, raise your hands because th this right here is, this is going to get you right here. This is going to get this. Love is sometimes saying no. Let that marinate for a minute. Let it, let it, let it. Love is sometimes saying no. Do you know what we're guilty of? We're guilty of trying to rescue someone that we love when God put them in that position to deal with him and not us. We go on trying to get somebody out of this and that and whatever, and God said, stop, the devil didn't put them there. I did. I, did. I put them there. Why? Because they empty. And they need to know that they need to be filled. And sometimes no is God's yes. 
Yeah. Sometimes I know it's hard for you, mother. I know it's hard for you to leave that child there. But in order for him to grow, in order for her to grow, you can't bail him out every time. You can't get him out of trouble every time. Sometimes they just got to be in it. Them and God, they got to be in it. And you got to stay out the way. I know it's hard. You love them. But you got to get out the way. You got to get out the way. You got to let God deal with it. Because you've done everything you could do. And they ain't paid you no attention, no way. We live in a generation that knows everything. Knows everything but God. Knows everything but obedience. And so I'm trying to save someone tonight that's caught up in a situation in their mind and don't know which way to go. I'm here to tell you tonight, God said, let me deal with it and you stay out of it. Stay out the way and let God make the way. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Because you can't handle it. You have done all that you can do. And so now, put it over into his hands. And let God have his perfect work. victory word when you put God first <laughs> when you put God first he will teach you how to be second and not putting your flesh or others before him I'm going to say it again when you put God first he will teach you how to be second Yeah, he will teach you when he's first. He will show you that nothing belongs to you. It all belongs to him. And when it says, and not putting your flesh or others before him, in other words, not putting your flesh in this sense means your flesh, your emotions, your feelings, how you feel. Yes, we serve a loving God, but when God is doing his work, he don't care how you feel. He ain't about your feelings. He's about his work. He's about the outcome. And so, word family tonight, don't leave tonight empty. But you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit through the word, through his word. Be swift to hear, slow to speak. God will deliver on time. He will. But I can't, I can't help it if his own time is not your time or mine. He said in his word, he wouldn't leave us nor forsake us. But he didn't put a time limit on it. He didn't give you a time. You have to have the faith to believe and trust and know God's going to do it. Are you willing to wait on it? I'm asking you tonight, Victory Word. Are you willing to wait on it? Are you willing to stop doing what you're doing? Are you willing to put him first? Are you willing to talk to him? Are you willing to do more than just go through the motions of church? But I'm talking relationship tonight. I'm talking about real, authentic relationship. Not just church rhetoric. And if you are willing to do that, 
He can fill you up. I pray this word has helped you tonight. I got part two next Wednesday. Stay tuned for part two next week of emptiness without love. Come on back. Be with me next Wednesday night. And we'll start it all over again. Would you do that for me? All right. I love you. We love you here at the Victory Word Church. We can't wait to see you this coming Sunday. Come on out and be a part of our intercessory prayer at 1030 a.m. here in the sanctuary. You'd be glad. It's 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 the it's the you know it's the it's the pregame. It's the pregame warm-up. We warm up, getting ready for 11 o'clock service. Amen. Come on, be a part of us this coming Sunday morning. If there's one that would like to uh sow a seed to the ministry tonight. We, first of all, appreciate all those that give on a regular basis. We're thankful for your giving. We thank you for your, your seed sowing. We thank you for all of the contributions that you, you give in helping us build the kingdom of God here on earth. And Victory Word, we're going to work towards doing more than just, just being in the sanctuary. We want to do, we want to do outreach. We want to reach young people, older people, all people, black people, white people. It doesn't matter. We are kingdom-minded and kingdom-focused. And so all of your contributions, we're thankful. We're so grateful with that. We're a small church, but we serve a big God. And so you can give through our PayPal. You can give online. You can give through our Givelify. You can drop it in the mailbox. Uh, the different ways to give is on the screen. And so we're just thankful. We appreciate you. We appreciate all that you give, all that you do. I'm thankful for all of our members. I'm thankful for all of our partners that partner with the Victory Word Church. 12 years and still going strong. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Because I believe in my spirit and really I know that the best is yet to come so come on out this Sunday morning meet me here at the Victory Word Church 1030 in accessory prayer as we lead into our 11 o'clock word and worship service I love you I thank you for tuning in and being a part of this ministry you don't know how much that means to me that you're still supporting us and you're still giving your heart to God. So on behalf of myself, Lady T, Tina Oliver, A.P. Mark Oliver, and the entire staff here at the Victory Word Church, we want you to know we love you, we're thankful for you, and remember, there's victory in the word, and we are living our future now. God bless you. I'll see you soon.